Well, hello, and welcome to the Shifts and Pucks News Pack for Tuesday, September the 6th. Of course, you can follow us on Twitter at Shifts and Pucks, Facebook.com Shifts and Pucks, YouTube.com Shifts and Pucks, Twitch.com Shifts and Pucks. You can subscribe wherever you get your audio, as well as find us on the Area 51 Sports Network. We did not do a podcast last night. We will be doing a podcast tomorrow night discussing the signing of JT Miller by the Vancouver Canucks and the seven-year $56 million deal, uh, as well as what the Canucks did and did not do over the offseason. It's been a, in terms of news, certainly quieter offseason for the Canucks in recent memory here. Of course, um, last couple, been a bit more, um, offseason is a bit more, uh, noticeable in terms of the moves of course you had last year the trades of to acquire connor garland the year before that uh tyler Toffoli, chris tanev jacob markstrom leave from vancouver to elsewhere now all three by the way are on the calgary flames interestingly enough uh this year a little bit more quiet i mean they made the moves of Ilya mikhaev and curtis lazar to go to joshua etc and andre Gismenko in the off season and then it was quiet for a while and then now things have ramped up and both jt miller of course signing that seven year 56 million dollar deal and patrick alvin spoke to the media today a couple of things that media uh miller was talked about today he uh, he said he uh, does take some great pride in this contract. Uh, his goal, of course, is to win the Stanley Cup. He believes uh, he wants to win a current group of uh, with the, this current group of players in Vancouver. Um, he uh, was told by Bruce Boudreau, and I think this is an interesting point of the conversation, is that he was he's considered the number one center on the team. And uh, he was also asked... And didn't really answer much about the being the American uh, Americans wanting to play closer to home or in America, as that was a theme with Johnny Gaudreau and Matthew Kachuk with the Flames during the off season. Um, didn't really comment on that question, uh, but um, pretty much said he's excited. Of course, uh, his young new, newborn Owen was. Uh, making noises in the back as well. So congratulations to the Miller family on that. And so those were, that's really what uh, is going on here. Miller's getting ready for camp. Uh, and of course he's, I did my instant reaction on that specifically. Uh, but um, yeah, JT Miller looks like he's getting ready for camp, confident about this team. Uh, talked a little bit about Vasily Podkolz and talked a li- also a little bit about uh, the intensity he brings and he's what he's aware about his intensity that he brings to there. Uh, he's a guy that wears his heart on his sleeve. Um, some will like that, some will not. But um, he's a guy that uh, even um, Bruce Bartlett, the agent, uh, talked about that on Donnie and Dolly today. And he wants to be, he's a guy that wants to be the center of attention. Now, of course, you remember during uh, during the COVID All-Canadian Division season, the that COVID outbreak, Miller stepped up and spoke a lot on behalf of the players. So that's the where he gets um, at that. Uh, uh, Patrick Alvin spoke today as well, talked about JT Miller, uh a bit talked about the signing as well uh and uh basically uh the one couple of things to come of note of that i think is um a couple things there uh always a competition of short as the centuries when you go into the open mar- market um, he did say that if the club manages JT Miller's ice time better, he thinks Miller can help the team even more going forward. So, um, that was some of the big things that ca- we came up about there. He, uh, was asked about Bull Horvat. Now that is the next uh, domino to fall. Now the question is Bo Horvat, Bo Mar- Horvat comes an unrestricted free agent at the end of the season. 
Uh, now that's the question. Are the Canucks signing Bo Horvat? Are the Canucks trading Bo Horvat? All of that. But um, Alvin did say that uh, we'll see. He did say that there's a deal to be made. Um, talks from Elliot Friedman making the rounds in Vancouver today suggested Bo Horvat's at around $7 million a season. So, well, that will be our poll question if you think that the Canucks should do that or not uh, today. And we'll, so we'll see. It's, um, you know, uh, from according to Bartlett, who I think gave them, I felt gave most the, of the information. He basically, he said that this did come down quickly within the last five days. Uh, the Canucks did not give Miller a permission to seek a trade uh, in the uh, off season. And, um, that is pretty much that. Now, other Canuck news going on today. A couple of other things with the Canucks. Uh, Patrick Alvin did say Tucker Pullman. They are expected Tucker Pullman to be ready for camp. Played, uh, of course, last season. He had uh, he was dealing with concussion headache issues and missed uh, most of last season. Uh, played a lot here, so they are... Uh, hoping to get Pullman back into the fold here, play a regular spot. Played 40 games last year, three points in 40 games last season. Uh, so that is there. That would be a good ad for Vancouver there as well. Uh, Rick Dolly will talk on the returning Donnie and Dolly show a couple of things. Uh, there's still some interest in Calvin DeHaan, uh, as he, uh, Looks, uh, there's some, and they said Dehan intrigues him. Uh, Subban's age, another name that's been in there, doesn't look like that that is going to be much of a fit. And, uh, Canucks, he did confirm Canucks are out on Rodriguez. Rodriguez is seeking about two million. Him and Tyler Mon, another player that he met, uh, um, mentioned former Canuck, waiting for some teams to move around some cap space. Uh, before they find a move. And then you also, as far as Jake Furtanen goes, uh, there have been some discussion about him getting a PTO with Edmonton. Uh, there apparently are five teams, including the Oilers, interested in bringing that him back. So that kind of is the rundown of what's going on in Vancouver uh, there. Uh, one other note, just from the terms of Vancouver coverage spec. Wyan Art has chosen not to return to the athletics. Uh, he said he loved his time there. He still finds it surreal that he wrote for them for the last several seasons, uh, sharing his heights, uh, highlights working with Trance and Harmon Dial, Thomas Trance and Harmon Dial. Um, and it's so. Um, he'll figure out his next steps pretty shortly, but you wanted to thank everyone who read the armies and contribute to them, either reading or tweeting and yelling at me. So congratulations and all the best to the future for YNR. But that's what's going on in Vancouver. Uh, Calgary, um, new reporter covering the Calgary flames for the athletic. That was also, that was announced today. Of course, Haley Salavian focusing more next year of the season on women's hockey. And uh, so Julian McKenzie will be moving in. Of course, he hopes the Chris Johnson podcast. He will continue to do that. Uh, but um, he, Julian McKenzie tweeted, looking forward to the next step in my writing media journey. I'm moving to Calgary later this month to Calgary to cover the NHL Flames for the Athletic. So that is uh, exciting there uh, for him. So welcome him. Uh, thanks. Um, uh, he thanks Myrtle, Craig Custance, Aaron Yobinson for giving him the chance, and Haley Salvian for advice. Um, and uh, there we go. New reporter covering the Flames. Uh, the other news, of course, we'll go back to Tuesday and uh, the Women's World Championship. And, or not to Tuesday, sorry, today is Tuesday. Let's go back to Sunday. The Women's World Championship, another great game between the Canadian women and the U.S. women. Uh, Canada coming away 
with the victory winning gold uh, there in uh, there. They win two to one to uh, there. It was a, uh, it got off to a bit of a slow start um, in terms of offense, but um, the shots uh, were at 1.12 to six after two periods, but uh, it did start to pick up Canada and Brianne Jenner scored both of the goals uh, and uh, gave Canada the two nothing lead. And, uh, but then um, the U S slowly got their way, worked their way back as has been the U S's way. And so uh, as we look at the, summary here as uh I said you know uh Jenner Brian Brian Jenner scored at 9 30 of the second period for Marie Philippe Pepin and Ellis Shelton Ellis Shelton had a breakout tournament here uh I thought Canada's defense just was really strong Ellis Shelton was strong Jocelyn the Rock again Megan Mickelson coming back in uh and then uh helped and then uh at the 1050 format. Brienne Jenner scored again from Pillier and Sarah Nurse put, pulled him up to two to nothing. And then with 21 seconds to go in the second period, Abby Rock from Kessel and Kendall Coyne Schofield, who was the U.S. player of the game. Uh, and of course, uh, that was on the power play there. Uh, and there, uh, no, it was not. That was an even strength goal there and a note that was a power play goal sorry that jenner was off for interference and then no scoring in the third but um and marie's desbans made a couple of big saves especially a couple one on abby rock uh mid second uh kept them in and then the u.s kept pressing and then another Marie Fleet Plan didn't score the goal but she blocks that last shot with five seconds to go the canadian uh the there was a penalty there uh tripping uh late um Desmond's took a penalty at the uh, eight uh 834 mark story of the third period the canadian the u.s put on the pressure Desmond's kept their team in the game she made an amazing save she made another amazing save late in the third late in the third before Malik, uh that keeps it tied uh, but U.S. kept putting on the pressure, and then Marie Philippe Poulin with the big block, and Canada three peats. They win their third straight gold medal. Uh, U.S. won the in the uh, in the round robin tournament, but Canada won in the gold medal. So, but another great game. Uh, Sarah Fillier, Taylor Heiss came out stars. Ella Shelton came out of the star and. Uh, expected another, I guess, some notes uh, with Jenna Halford say that some note, um, expected announcement from PHWA about, um, about the, some, the, about some news coming out. So we'll be watching for that. Um, but, you know, I think the, the sad part about all of this, uh, Andrea Skinner was on in the, came out and spoke. Um, she's the new board chair, of course, with Hockey Canada right now. And this was, uh, she uh, talked a little bit about her, uh, she spoke on, on the intermission on TSN. She talked about her confidence with the, uh, with the board and all of that. Um, she uh yeah um i'm trying to word this um they're basically explain why she's backing uh scott smith in oh sorry about that was we'll blocked there, there scott uh why they're backing scott smith why they're backing the executive they feel uh the big thing that she said that, that the elections are coming up in november 
Um, but they feel that they have the people there that will be do making the changes. Um, but the, the big thing that came out from this that I think really bothered a lot of people in hockey is who presented the gold medals. And it, after all of this, having Scott Smith fly to Denmark and present the gold medals, I, I think it just bothered a lot of people, uh, uh, an embattled guy that is uh, um, just not a good look for Hockey Canada. Lots of criticism. Frank Saravelli criticized. Ian Kennedy, who we had on our show, our podcast, criticized. Um, Elliot Friedman talked about it today. It just wasn't a good look for Hockey Canada. And um, that kind of put a bit of a black eye a bit of a sore on an overall good tournament and a good hockey game and and um can't we'll talk about this more on our podcast but i can't you can't blame the canadian women for this um they should have not some they should have not accepted the medals they deserve the medals they deserve the glory they deserve the praise and they deserve the congratulations so that's what's going on there now the other thing that came out here is and here that I do want to mention is the checkers here. Um, by the way, Taylor Heiss was named the MVP of the tournament and Czechia won the bronze medal. Uh, they won their first bronze in this tournament in their tournament history as uh, they beat Switzerland four to two. Um, Swiss team injured, only able to dress 17 healthy players. Natalia Minova, Milankova, sorry, had two goals. Uh, Kira Plesarova stopped 18 of 20 shots for the win. And Czechs get their first uh, bronze medal. So that uh, covers the women's world championships there. Uh, one other note here in terms of signing. Uh, here, San Jose signs Evgeny Svechnikov to a contract. This was done this weekend. I believe it was done on Sunday. Um, and uh, so he signed a deal, a uh, one-year deal with the Sharks. And so he played with the Jets last year. And so he's joining the San Jose Sharks. So, and of course, WHL training camps continuing on. As and junior camps trade uh, continuing on here, a lot of red and white games, a lot of four on four tournaments. You can see this excitement for the players getting back in as the brossers are getting set for junior hockey as well. So we'll keep be keeping an eye on that. Got the young stars coming up as well in Penticton. Uh, that will be fun as well. So we've got lots to get into as we've turned the over a leaf, pardon the pun, heading. Closing the summer, headed into fall. Still summer out there, technically. Very beautiful day out. But that's the news. Uh, you can follow us from us all individually. Tyler, T-N-O-B-L-E. Chris Schneid, S-C-H-N-E-I-D-Z. Devin Gordhow, 09. Sean Beardy, Canuck, 03. I am K-E-V-O-L-E. Shifts and Tucks. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch. Subscribe wherever you get your audio, as well as on the Area 51 Sports Network. Thanks for watching, listening. We'll talk to you all very soon. Bye.